advent of code day five. What is going on? We have ranges and ingredients. We want to know how many are fresh. But what does that mean? Uh, I see the ranges are which ones are fresh. Interesting. Six three eight. Nice. Uh, I see. Fourteen. I need to like intersect a bunch of intervals. Um Sixteen. Ah. Uh. Three, four, five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. <laughs> fourteen. I see. Uh, like that. Maybe like that. Not the right answer. Is that even a different answer? 
B4 something, B412. Is it a fencer? Probably more correct. What else might be wrong here? Okay, so what was going on here? Well, okay, first I'm gonna clean up my code so it prints out both P1 and P2, which might just be as simple as this. Uh, separate it out. 638 and 3.5 something, 3.38. Okay, um, so we are given a list of intervals and a list of numbers, queries, basically. And the intervals are pretty big. So I guess the numbers are pretty big too. In part one, they say which of these numbers are in any of these intervals. Uh, so fine. So parse out, you know, separate out the list, the ranges from the queries, from the ingredients. For each range, parse out a pair of ints and keep track of that. We don't want to like part, you know do something with every number in the range because they're they're really big. Uh, so for part one, we just go through all the numbers and we say you know we want to know if it's any of the ranges. Initially, it's not, and then we just check all the ranges. And if it's in that range, say true. And if it's true, then that counts towards part one. Uh, so that's not too bad. Part two is trickier. Part two is like how big is the union of all the ranges? And the issue is that they can overlap in arbitrary ways. Uh, so actually, this example doesn't have all the cases, but you know, 10 to 14, sorry, six, yeah, fine, 16 through 20 uh, overlaps with 12 to 18. 12 to 18 also overlaps with 10 to 14. Um, so here's my code for part two. So we want to sort the ranges by their left endpoint, um, and then we're going to keep track of like uh, the latest number that we've seen. Uh, and so the point is, what is the point? So like this new range, if we're already in the middle of the range, uh, then start at the next number that we haven't seen yet. And then we only count this range if we actually uh, like have stuff in it. Like it might be that this new interval is just, we've already seen the whole thing, in which case there's nothing to count here. This would be like, counting negative. Um, so that's one sort of edge case. Uh, and then we update our current position to the end of the interval. Although the current position, if the current position may already be past the end of the interval. So that's why we need this max here. That was another mistake I had. So these are tricky conditions. Uh, and apparently that's enough to get the right answer. Um, so I don't know. I mean, what's going on here? We have these intervals, and maybe this interval. So, you know, initially, current is like off to the left here. We count this whole interval. Now we've like seen everything up to here. So this interval, we actually only want to count this part. And now this interval, we've actually seen everything, like where everything is past this. Uh, so we count nothing here. Um, and it's important that we're processing these in sorted order because you might worry like, well, maybe this guy is way off to the left and you actually do need to count him. But because these left endpoints are increasing, that won't happen. Um, if we're like, if we're past this, you know, if, if we're past the start of this interval, that means that we're, we are actually like, have already seen everything uh, in this interval because we know that we got a current from someone who started before this guy. So it's not that much code, but it is kind of tricky to think about. Um, and you know, I had a bug and I'm still not totally confident in my explanation, but that's all for today. See you tomorrow.